Hey, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Good. Hey, this is a 10-minute talk with Terrence. 10 a.m. every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Um, uh, now I'm on YouTube. You can just hit the search, 10-minute talk with Terrence. Please share, go in and like, and subscribe. Uh, there are some good motivational uh, topics I'm working on. Uh, this topic I'm working on, this this is a good five-point series I'm going to work on starting this week. Um, uh, just keep me in prayer. Uh, keep my family in prayer. Keep the Cobbins family in prayer. Uh, keep a lot of family in prayer, the Lloyd's family. And uh, let's just support each other. You know what I'm saying? Keep my brother Kevin and Pat in prayer. Just keep all the leaders at the at the TWC in prayer and all leaders around in all churches, really, because no one know what another person go through. You never know what another person is going through, uh, dealing with, you know, with family and being in leadership. Sometimes you, you go through things, you deal with things, you know, and uh, it kind of brought me to my topic on today. I was uh, praying with a friend of mine on last night and I was thinking about, um, you know, sometimes we we have to understand that our kids and our family, we have our own journey. We have to go on sometimes, you know, and uh, there come a time when we want to protect our kids and protect our family and our friends and even our wives and our husbands and, and our brothers and our sisters. But sometimes we have to allow them to go through what they need to go through because you never know the plan that God has for them down the road. You know, God bless us to bless others, but there come a time we have to back up and because we become enablers. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good to see you, brother. Brother Clarence, what's up, baby? And brother, sister Heather. Hey, let me tell y'all something. Hey, man, I, I, I thank God for family, man. I mean, family means a lot. My family just went through a lot. Continue to keep my family in prayer, sister uh, Michelle. But the topic today I want to talk about is be your best you. Own it. You know what I'm saying? And and it's funny because I was talking to my director yesterday. And um, I'm always talking to my friend Mo. I better give him a shout out for you. Say something again. So my point is that be your best you and own it. That is what I'm talking about. So let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you on today. Father, we, we love on you today. Help us, God, to make better decisions and choices for our life. But Father, let us first learn to love ourselves, Father. You know, we're talking about self-love today. You know, be the best person you called us to be, the best person we need to be. And Father, we thank you right now. Continue to let us be the light in other people's darkness, oh God. Let us also shine where darkness tries to lie and people try to seek. And Father, we ask you bless those that try to come against those who's trying to do the right thing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen. I went there for a reason. Hey, Sister Tanya, let me tell y'all something. Oh, First Lady Tanya, I'm sorry. First thing we have to understand, too, is that be your best you. That means there come a time in your life where you have to be the best person you know how to be. You know, and it took me to the scripture, Colossians 3, 23, 24. It says, whatever you do, work it with all, with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Watch this. Since you know that you will receive on an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. We have to remember who we're serving. We have to remember who we're trying to please, you know. And there comes a time we have to be your best friend. This, this, this is going to be a five-point series of self-help, love, and understanding you, okay? We're going to start with the first one. The first one I'm going to work on today is called self-work. You know, I got four more coming, you know, and the second going to be self-value. The third one going to be self-achievement. The fourth going to be self-confident. And number five is self-happiness. Amen. So first thing I want to talk about is self-worth. Okay. And I want to get through this real quick. If you have some press questions, please text me, inbox me like you do. Okay. It is the core of your true self. However, there are many ways for you to assess your self-worth and the opinions you have about yourself. An extreme example of this is that you, you believe that you are a good person, you deserve good things, or you believe that you are a bad person, you deserve bad things. The value you assign to yourself and your abilities come from your self-assessment. We, we have to understand how do we see ourselves? How do you see yourself? It's an emotional way you see yourself with, with your eyes closed or with your eyes open. 
you know, it's what feels right or what's wrong to you, you know, but that is the foundation of being who you are. And then reflects how you talk to yourself and how you feel about yourself. People look at you and they hear what you're saying, but what are you doing? What's your life? What is your life example saying? I said, I put a survey out a while back. Is that give me three words about me that people, I want to know three words that people feel about me. And I was like, one of the, one of the three words that people felt about me was that I wanted people to understand that one word people said was consistency. And I agree because I'm consistent. I'm resilient. I'm, I'm, that's why my book is called Transition Resilience because in every transition in life, you're going to come across some resilience. You're going to come across some issues, but it's how you handle the situation. That's why my signature says, plain as day, it ain't how you fall, but it's how you get back up. Amen. See, self-worth is how you, how you value yourself. It's not based on what others think of you or the things that you have or haven't or accomplished or whatever. It comes from within how you feel about yourself. But it's easy to forget what our worth is is determined on our outside forces, who you connected with. Your most important sell in life is to sell yourself you. So you got to believe in yourself. No one can tell me what I cannot do because I'm all, I've been drilled in my spirit. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. So once, can no one tell me? I've been called arrogant. I've been misunderstood. I told you I'm wired different. I am who I am. I preach different. I teach different. I do everything different. It's not that I do what I want to do. I do what God allows me to do. There are some things I like. I like protocol. I like things done right in a certain way. Those are good things. You know, when you've done things wrong sometime in your life, you, you want to try to do the right thing. Because I've learned through experience that there's some things in life you just you got to do it right because you want it done the right way, amen. If someone do a service, you want to pay them for their service, amen. Second Timothy says, and to do your best to present yourself to God as as one approved. This is NIV versions I'm, I'm teaching on a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who's correctly handled the word of truth. See your initiative sense of self work helps you to trust your own conclusion and make better decisions and choices for yourself. See, which then you got to ask yourself, which are important qualities that can help you advance in your personal growth and in your development as a human being? Those are things we have to ask ourselves. What can I do better? What do I need to do different? I mean, at some point when I'm talking to you and when I'm counseling someone and you get somebody to get a dead fear, I'm like, okay, then you go do it. You know what you're doing, go do it. And then I'll say how that worked out for you. I'm not, I'm not judging you or anything. I'm just telling you, I'm letting you do you since you think you know. If you come to me for advice, please listen to this one I have to say. Because I've done that. I've been there. I've done that. So, and I've lost and I've learned from my losses and I've lived to win because that's my purpose in life because I'm resilient. Amen. See, to somebody who has a high self-esteem, a lot of self-confidence, therefore, finds it a e find it a lot easier to acquire the values that get them, the things that give them easier or a better life. But see, but there are some people who have low worth, low self-worth, low self-esteem. What else they got? I mean, they consider themselves being around the wrong people, therefore struggling to acquire the things they need. Watch this. Things they need, want, and require in their lives, making life quite difficult. But see, there's a flip side to this. If you choose to do the right thing, that right, Sister Karen. If people choose to do the right thing, things will get better for you. Because that's how you position your mind. It's a mindset. I don't think with the glass half empty. I think with the glass half full because that's how I'm, I'm positioning myself. That's how I'm structuring my mind. That's how my mind is structured. That's how I'm strategizing. I'm around people who want something in life. I'm surrounding myself around people who, who has a right mindset. People that are good to you, but also good for me. See, sometimes we're around people that they might be good to you because they want something in, in return. But you want people to be good to you, but also be good for you. So now the question I ask you, which which way you want to go now? Which way are we moving? Are we moving forward? What's your, your next move is very important. After listening to this, your next move is very important. Because life is essential. See, tomorrow is not promised to no one. 
And there comes a time in our life that we have to start making better decisions and choices for our life. That's going to help us get the things that we want in life. God said he's going to provide our needs as long as you're doing the right thing. That's a win-win. And now he has put you in position to get the things that we want. That's another win-win. And then people see you getting the right things and doing the right things. Guess what? They want to mimic you. They want to say, okay, what, what is this person doing I need to start doing? See, there comes a time in our life we got to start making better decisions and choices. You follow what I'm saying? Galatians 1 and 10 says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings? This is NIV. Or of God? Or am I trying to please people? Listen to what I'm saying. Am I trying to please people? If I were still, still trying, listen to this. If I'm still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So who you want to please, people or God? Or better yet, yourself. Take care of you. Be your best you. Stop trying to be somebody else. I'm not that person. You know, it comes a time I like, you know, pastor preach on it so much. We got to take care of ourselves. You know, and Pastor Kevin gets up and he talks so much. There comes a time we have to focus on ourselves. We got to take care of us. We got to do the right things right. Amen. There's a topic that uh, Martin Luther King, I love Martin Luther King quotes. I love good quotes. If anybody knows me, I love poetry. That's my outlet. I love poetry. You know, but it's one particular, it's two particular type of quotes that uh, Martin Luther King said. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And the second one says, we remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Surround yourself people who's going to be there to help you get to where you need to be. And that will tell you when you're wrong and tell you when you're right. One thing I can't say, people call me. And say, hey, Terrence, you, you did this, you did that. But yet you never call me when I'm doing the right things. I work a very difficult job. Mental health sometimes. I get letters from kids telling me, man, I, Terrence, I, 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 you, you, you was a, I appreciate you. you. You helped me out. I came. I was in a dark place at one time. And I thank you for, you know, talking to me and being there for me. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. But yet, you know, sometimes I get called in and I'll be like, they saying what I'm doing wrong or someone said I did this and did that, which is totally wrong. And, you know, and I'm a type of person that if I did something wrong, I own it. I say, you know what? I apologize. If I said something, did something, I'm sorry. I repent immediately, you know. But here, here's the thing. If you're going to focus on a person's wrong, start focusing on their right too. You feel what I'm saying? And it's time for us to stop doing that. It's time for us to be your best you. Take care of you. Put yourself in position to do the right thing. There is some time we can be so nice that people can take our kindness for weakness. But I guarantee if you learn your self-worth, learn who you are and whose you are, I guarantee you life will be better. God bless you. I love you. Again, this is 10 Minute Talk with Terrence at 10 a.m. every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Pray for your boy. I'll be heading out to Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan uh, the second week in October. Uh, continue to pray for me and my family. Um, man, I, I'm on. I'm doing a class, a leadership class on uh, system thinking, and uh, I want people to understand something that we have to change. Our, it's a mindset, amen. And don't be afraid to accept help, amen. God bless you. Let's breathe real quick. Give me one. Breathe one good time. Let it out one more time. Do it one more time. Let go and let God. Stop cast, Stop carrying stuff you should be casting. Amen. God bless you. And always remember, it ain't how you fall, baby, but it's how you get back up. And always remember, you are close to God as you choose to be. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. As I pray for my family, my wife, Sheila, my kids, Sierra, Clint, Ayana, Deron, Jemima, Tyler, Sissy. I love my family. I love you guys. My mama, I love you, mama. Just always being there for a brother. 
Let me tell you something, man. Love on your family. Love on your mother. Love on your brothers. Love on your sister. Love on your father. Love everyone that's in your family because you never know. Tomorrow's not promised. And that last impression can go a long way. You know, I, I've had experience with, with people that have that have had arguments with family members and then that person left or passed away and they felt bad. They went to a state of depression. Okay? Learn to forgive. Accept help. God bless you. I love you. This is Timmy Talk with Terrence. Please go to YouTube, share it, subscribe, amen, and like. God bless you. I love you. Peace out.